Last night, there were riots in Southport um, after the stabbing of these, well, it was eight girls, but uh, three of them died tragically. And this genuinely is one of the worst things I've ever heard of. Um, as of the time of broadcasting, um, we don't have firm details on the suspect. Uh, we are aware that his parents are from Rwanda and they came here in 1996, as I understand it. Um, but that's basically all the information we have. It is important to say there has been a false name circulated, which we will talk about shortly. Yep. There has been what is presumed to be his real name circulated. We will not share or report that because, one, he is a minor, no matter the grievousness of his crimes. Two, until he has been charged, it will not be released. So just out of journalistic responsibility, we won't be repeating that here, and we advise people don't post it in the comments and the like if you think you've identified it. Yeah. Uh, we'll get to fake news that was going around shortly as well. Um, so after the tragic event, there was a vigil where thousands of people gathered in Southport, uh, as you can see, huge numbers of people, uh, gathered to share their condolences and grief. And this was very touching. Keir Starmer went down and laid a wreath and got heckled. Um, but again, it's not really his fault. So <laughs> we, I'm going to have to disagree. <clears throat> we can talk about that another time. Um, but there was an interesting event where a man was apparently arrested on the way to the vigil uh, because he had a machete or a knife of some sort. And I haven't turned this on, so of course. I think it was meant to be a flick blade and he was wearing a bandana. Yeah, and uh, he had a sort of distinctive appearance. And so everyone assumed that, ah, this is a Muslim who's going to the vigil with a knife. Who knows what that means? Um, just to be clear, we do not know the religion of the person who committed the stabbing at this time. So um, who knows, right? But uh, Josh got a tip off from someone who claims to have known the person who was arrested and says that he wasn't a Muslim. Um, but uh, honestly, all of this is up in the air at the moment. Well, he was arrested. So he was spotted <clears throat> with the knife at 10 to 7. He was arrested at 5 to 7. And that was an hour before the planned protest on St. Luke's Road mm. had been scheduled to go ahead. So word had reached the ears of the people who were agitated and gathering at the time. Yeah. And so, as I put in my tweet there, this was one of the catalyst reasons why they started targeting a mosque, which was seemingly unrelated to Monday stabbing. Yeah. Uh, there are other reasons why they targeted a mosque as well. Um, but the, the point being, we don't have any solid details. So I would strongly advise, if you can't be sure about the things that you are saying, don't say anything. Um, and in fact, we may as well move straight on to the fake news then. Uh, channel 3 Now, a fake news channel, uh, posted 70-year-old Ali al-Shakati arrested b for being the stabber. He was not a Syrian refugee. This is not his name. Uh, this is totally false. And this was doubtless a, a significant contributing factor to the mm. protesters uh, essentially becoming rioters in front of a mosque. Um, there are other people that we know who did this. David Atherton was one of them, not to call him out particular, but lots of people um, on our side were sharing this name because it confirmed a bunch of people's biases. Uh, it's not that the Muslim community hasn't produced lots of terrorists or lots of people who have done terrible things, uh, but we shouldn't be jumping to conclusions, and it doesn't behoove us in any way to be spreading false information. Again, David has apologized here, which is exactly what he should do, so of course, you know, uh, that's the correct thing to do in this situation. Um, the problem is, as the old Mark Twain quote goes, a lie gets halfway around the world before the truth gets his trousers on. Yes. And there were people still yesterday after the vigil, while the yep. protests were going on, including Lawrence, who mistakenly repeated this claim. And so yep. this is another contributing factor as to why the outrage of the crowd, which is completely justified over the atrocity committed, was directed at the wrong target. Mm. We don't know yet that it wasn't an Islamic terrorist action, no. do we? No, that's true. Yeah, we don't. But we also know that that was not the identity of the man in question. Yeah, and so to report that's it true. as fact is erroneous and irresponsible. And just so anyone in future sees, anytime you see a screenshot of a news report claiming to be true, just go and track down the website because I saw it. Yeah, I went and found the website. I saw the website didn't look credible. 
Within a couple of hours, the website had changed it, which is why we have an archive link to the false reporting in the description. Just be careful. That's yeah. all. Ba basically, if you aren't confident about the source, just don't post it. Just don't comment about it. Uh, just let it slide until the real information comes out. Um, it really does do damage to our side of the conversation if we are complicit in spreading fake news. Um, so anyway, uh, as you can see, things were getting very tense and a large protest uh, sprung up around the mosque because of this fake news. Now, I just want to be clear, yesterday on the podcast, I told people do not go down here. Uh, there is nothing to be gained by going um, but uh, a lot of people, of course, don't listen to this podcast, more the f more foolish they are, <laughs> and uh, they did decide to go down. A local resident did send me a message. He'd sent me details as it was unfolding on Monday because his garden, there were police helicopters and, and mm -hmm. evacuation ambulances flying over. So yep. he did verify he lives in the area. And he said that there were numerous people that showed up from outside yep. the town with distinct different accents. Yeah who were clearly spoiling for some kind of fight because they brought booze to the event. Yeah. And so yeah, and then, this was a powder keg. And 100%. Uh, and uh, lo lots of them represented here, uh, sometimes misrepresented by Jack here as locals. Um, I think it's clear that a lot of these people are not locals. So because, lots of them at the vigil were, lots of them heckling yeah, here, Starmer were. At, uh, kicking yeah. down the fence of the mosque, no, lots of them were outsiders. Yeah. At, at, the, at the vigil, yes. But uh, surrounding the mosque, probably not. Because uh, at, at the time of broadcast, there's simply no reason to think this man was a Muslim. There's nothing that indicates that yet at all. Um, and so you had locals chanting, we want our country back. You had people chanting, Allah, Allah, who the F is Allah. Uh, so you can see that this has this sort of distinct aspect of EDL style street politics, which is why the local police said, well, this is the EDL. Now, as far as I'm aware, the EDL doesn't really exist. It doesn't. It was disbanded in 2013. Um, so this is not the EDL, because such an organization doesn't exist, but it's probably not unfair to characterize it as EDL supporters or people who would be sympathetic to the EDL, which they should have, frankly, um, been more careful with their language. But let's be fair, everyone's been spreading a lot of fake news recently. Uh, so it goes both ways. Mm. It's interesting to hear you guys speak so rationally about this, given your reputation belies that, doesn't it? What's well, our it's reputation? Not, it's an unfair reputation that you have. I mean, this idea that if a politician speaks with either of you, that they no. must be banned and thrown out of the Oh, party. yeah. They actually took the time to listen to how you guys speak, as I've done, and as your listeners and viewers do. I mean, it's the polar opposite, not only of what they would expect of you, but of how they behave, because that other side, I mean, you're right in talking about these people who've got, you know, maybe jumped the gun uh, and said the wrong thing. But on the other side, we're getting the same thing as well. We're having yeah. Jess Phillips has just been saying uh, the problem is is the Twitter reaction and the mobs and things. Yeah. And it's like, well, hang on, you know, someone went and stabbed a bunch of children. It's, it's a horrific yeah. thing. Uh, the idea that this is the fault of the the rioting or the mobs, the, the mobs who, who, as you say, were probably wrong. But come on, there were still children killed by an aggressor. That's who the, the problem was. Yeah. Um, and so, <clears throat> as you can see, things just kept getting worse. People started attacking the mosque itself, attacking the fence. And so, naturally, police had to um, come to their uh, assistance and begin preventing the, the locals, or not the locals, the people who are attacking the mosque, from actually being able to do property damage, which of course is their job and the correct thing to do. So I, I do want to say one thing on, on the police, if I may. You should never attack a police officer. Mm -hmm. It's neither prudent nor, especially in this case, warranted, because they're not at fault for this. No. And they responded to the situation as quickly as they could, and they wanted to save the children's lives. I do think there is a perception, since the Palestine protests, mm -hmm. since the Leeds and Hare Hills riots, that policing of this sort only ever seems to apply to the English population because they know they will probably comply with it. We will get to that in a little bit. There's, there, there are definitely as open aspects of two-tier policing going on. Um, and it's not productive, but it's also, as you say, not warranted, not a good thing in and of itself to be so exuberant with the way that you're protesting. I mean, if you are going to protest, go and do it calmly. Just go. You've got to do it calmly. Otherwise, whatever you're protesting for, you lose the crowd and you become the story. And suddenly the issue that you are trying to raise awareness of is gone completely and you are now in the crosshairs of the powers that be. The story is no longer about the morning crowds who's who felt that the politicians that turned up to make a spectacle of themselves were insensitive. It is now 
the far right clashing with the police. One hundred percent. And so, speaking of clashing with police, um, again, Jack has uh, posted more footage. Did you hear about what happened to him? Yeah, he got assaulted by the crowd because he was a journalist, and they assumed that he was a hostile journalist. He's lost a tooth, and his stuff has been <gasps> stolen. Yes. So, public are oh. fortunately helping him with, you know, the, yeah. the surgery needed. But um, again, people on the ground. Yeah. Not very wise. But just, the, <clears throat> I'm not going to play the footage just because I don't know how YouTube would react to it. But um, this was a particularly violent protest as well. Uh, lots of bricks and chunks of mortar and various other heavy objects thrown at the police. Uh, lots of people have been injured from this. Um, in fact, I think we have. I think it was, was it 39 injuries and eight yeah. serious injuries? Yeah. Um, as like, it just. Very, very aggressive. Again, I don't really want to play it because I don't know how YouTube will respond to it. You can see bricks being thrown there. Um, this is not good. And these probably are the outside agitators. Mm. <clears throat> Especially the ones that are masked up. Yeah. You can't verify their identities. You don't know where they came from. Yeah. It's not out of the question. There might be some agent provocateurs mixed into the mix. It's mm -hmm. And so police uh, riot vans were deployed. And uh, as you can see, riot police there with their shields. Um, People scaling the vans, setting them alight. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the police were eventually sort of sent into retreat, much, uh, much similar to what happened in Leeds actually recently. Well, yeah. I was thinking Ireland specifically, and in Ireland, yeah, because in Parnell Square, obviously, th three children and a school worker were stabbed. Yeah. Miraculously, all survived. And this was also a, a second generation immigrant, a fifty-year-old Algerian man. Mm. Um, and the locals took to the streets, started mm. fights with police, and it led to the the toppling of the T-Shock at the time. So Yeah. Mm. Um, as you can see, police van on fire. Again, very reminiscent of Hair Hills as well. Just uh, the, the same sorts of scenes. Um, but uh, just, you know, absolute chaos, right? This is not in any way a good thing and shouldn't have happened and is totally overwhelming the story about what has actually happened to cause this, which is very frustrating. Um, but as you can see, there's just more events that honestly there's not much point going over. Uh, so we got a statement from the Home Secretary, which of course was very um, strong. And we'll compare that in a minute to some of the other statements she's made about other riots that haven't been as strong. Um, and I'm not saying it's not warranted either, but what I'm concerned about is this kind of the hard face towards one community and the soft face towards the other, mm -hmm. um, which... But we'll get to that in a second. Um, so anyway, this is what it looked like the next day. Obviously an absolute wreck. Again, very much like Hare Hills. Just absolute bomb shelter. A uh, bomb site. Which is terrible. Um, yeah, brick walls knocked over. Bins yeah. burned. Rubbish in the streets for audio listeners. It's And, and as well, this is why I, I think there might have been a number of outsiders here. The difference between the Hare Hills riots and these riots is that these riots have taken place in the neighbourhood of the people that were attending the vigil. So they've now got to deal with not only the loss of their children, but also the destruction of the area. Yeah. The Hare Hills riots, you could see how a group of outsiders who didn't feel it was their home had no qualms about setting, setting fire to their home. So I do wonder how many people from outside of Southport were involved in accelerating the violence. It seems evident that's happened. Uh, and... Uh... The community, of course, is left to clear it up, which is not great. A local construction crew just volunteered their time. Yeah. Um, so we have some actual reporting on this. Apparently 37 police officers were wounded. 27 were taken to hospital. Um, the personnel finally stood down from the major incident at 1.25 a.m., so this lasted well into the night. Not good. Um, and so let's have a look at the um, political response, shall we? So Keir Starmer, this was his response to the stabbing itself. Horrendous and deeply shocking news emerging from Southport. My thoughts with those all affected. Uh, I would like to thank the police and the emergency services for their swift response. I'm being kept updated. So he could be speaking about a tsunami or an earthquake there. Right? Mm -hmm. He could be speaking about a natural disaster. He is not saying whoever did this is getting the full force of the law. We are going to come down on that person like a ton of bricks. They will, you know, I mean, uh, I could go further, but I won't, I won't go too much further. But he could be, he, he could be, condemning someone for doing this. He's not. Uh, but what he had to say about the riots, of course, is different. 
The people of Southport are reeling off the horror inflicted upon them yesterday, again, like it was a natural disaster. Mm. They deserve our support and respect, of course. Uh, those who have hijacked the vigil for the victims with violence and thuggery have insulted the community as it grieves. They will feel the full force of the law. So, just mm. saying. Do you have the footage of him being heckled? Uh, uh, I haven't got it. Okay, so it. given that he showed up as part of what I can only assume is the controlled spontaneity program that yeah. they usually inflict on communities in the aftermath of preventable disasters like this and was heckled by local people, some of whom were saying, I, I know one of the girls that was killed. I held her in her arm in my arms and I never will again. Why are you showing up here? Yeah. Um, given he he is the one who has insulted the communities it grieves here, to use that language mm. uh, bites of irony. Kind of cruel irony. Yeah, it's very frustrating. Why? Why do you think he does that? Why do you think he comes down harder on the rioters than the the perpetrator? Because they have a very plastic view of human nature that does not see people as having cultural and historical baggage, and they are complicit in importing said people who may be more likely to commit said crimes. And so, the moment that he does acknowledge that he has done that, he is complicit. And also, as we've seen with the Palestinian marches, they view any expression of British patriotism to the contrary, like those servicemen who were hoisting the Union Jack near the Cenotaph, as a provocation to the new arrivals. If we just suppressed our culture enough and just spoke about liberal, tolerant British values that could be anywhere, they will just assimilate into the melting pot. And so actually, people that are saying, no, 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 this was preventable, this was a government policy, this is possibly conducted by a group of people who do not like us and will never like us, they are the real threat to community cohesion rather than the stabber themselves. Moreover, they don't seem to view themselves as the legitimate authority over the immigrant communities. Notice how they speak as a kind of an appeal to them. It's like, well, <laughs> we're going to be kind to you and, and you will then hopefully accept that we're the people in charge. Uh, that's not how they act towards the English community. They said, no, we know we're in charge of you, and we're going to use the full force of the law, and whatever that entails upon you. They could give exactly the same response to the rioting Roma or Muslims or whoever it is in Leeds. They could give exactly the same response, but they know that they will lose any kind of community um, cooperation. And, okay, well, now what, what do you do when you have small sort of colonies of people who don't really respect the actual legitimate authorities of the United Kingdom. You're in a bit of a bind. But we'll talk about that in a bit, um, because I thought we'd go on to uh, Yvette Cooper, uh, because this was um, particularly interesting, how people started juxtaposing her tenor <laughs> and response to the, say, Hare Hills riot, to the riot in Southport. And I think it's just worth watching this. Well, I've been talking to West Yorkshire police officers and also local community leaders about the action they're now taking in response to those unacceptable scenes of disorder and criminality that we saw last night. Uh, the community is working very closely together in response to what was a, a local child protection incident. But it's really important that the community can feel safe on the streets and also that the perpetrators feel the full force of the law. Right, so there's there's a kind of inauthenticity there, right? So, well, you know, it's appalling, appalling, the, the reaction. And the thing is, in the case of the Hare Hills riots, the community was entirely at fault, right? It seems that social services stepped in because of a case of child abuse, and the community rioted because of the lawful and legitimate authority that was exercised over them. And she's got a very, well, I mean, that's awful. We just want the community to be safe and we want them to cooperate, blah, blah. This is, her, and, and note, note the tone is very conciliatory when it comes to this community. Whereas this is her reaction to the Southport riot. So appalling to now see those same police facing violent attacks from thugs on the streets who have no respect for a grieving community. It's a total disgrace. Frankly, this is a time when everyone should be showing respect for a community and for the police. Now, I totally agree with the message, but she's a lot more animated, a lot more resolved in her facial expression. This is something she really means this. Yeah. And that's what people are picking up on. Yeah. They're very annoyed about it. One of the things I've, I've, from investigating cults that I found is that belief is not um, incentivized by the pursuit of 
accuracy or truth. So our beliefs, we don't necessarily, we like to think we hold our beliefs because they're true, but we actually believe them because they make us feel good because the rest of the cult will say, good, good on you for having that yeah. belief. And obviously you can see quite clearly that this is somebody who feels that um, she will be vindicated, she'll be supported and applauded by her peers mm. for coming down hard on, you know, white blokes, you know, yeah. uh, working class people, thugs as she calls them, and will not, it's as simple as that. She's just being reined in the stigma around her for attacking anybody who seems to be an immigrant or, yeah. or whatever the, in the first case is too much for her. So I'm sure she genuinely has those beliefs now. Oh yeah. But that's how it's, <clears throat> that's how it's manifested. And in, in the first clip, there are clearly landmines. She has been fed a script to strategically step around. Yeah. This next one, I, I don't think she was necessarily fed a full script. To I don't think off. she needs to be. No, this is yeah. this is the point. And uh, I just want to be clear. I agree with her on the right. Yeah. I agree with her. No, the, absolutely. These people were misinformed. They were totally out of line. They attacked an innocent party, the mosque and the Muslims there. They they ruined this event, this, this vigil for the people who are genuinely grieving. Like, I totally agree. Come down on the full force law. Now apply that to the other side. Yes. I want the same response for both sides. Full force of the law. I want anger. I want this kind of passion from them. Mm. Um, but uh, but anyway, I thought we'd uh, end this particular part with just looking at who wasn't there, but the people who are still being blamed anyway. So I was very careful to watch uh, Mr. Robinson's Twitter feed over this, and uh, he did not post the fake name, as far as I saw. He did not encourage people to go there, and he is not in the country because he's currently on the run because he showed a film that they don't want shown. Uh, so he is not involved in this and responsible. He just commenting on the thing after it's happened here. So I thought that was interesting. And then today, this morning, he put out a video condemning the riots. We will not win our country back throwing rocks. I fully understand your anger. Uh, and I stand with the heartbroken and devastated community in Southport. So he also condemns the people doing it. I think it's correct. Responsible. Well done. But again, there are lots of people, and we'll get to them, who are blaming not only Tommy Robinson, but also Nigel Farage, who put out what I thought was honestly quite a, a weak, sort of mm. wet statement on it. I mean, it's only a minute long. We'll, we'll listen to it. Well, it's pretty horrendous. A third young girl has died as a result of the stabbings yesterday in Southport. I obviously join everybody in my horror at what has happened. I know the Prime Minister went to lay flowers and was heckled, and it shows you how unhappy the public are with the state of law and order in our country. I have to say there are one or two questions. Uh, was this guy being monitored by the security services? Some reports say he was, others less sure. The police say it's a non-terror incident. Just as they said the stabbing, of an army lieutenant colonel in uniform on the streets of Kent the other day was a non-terror incident. I just wonder whether the truth is being withheld from us. I don't know the answer to that, but I think it is a fair and legitimate question. What I do know is something is going horribly wrong in our once beautiful country. So that, I don't think that was an inflammatory statement at all. That's why I called it wet. I think it was insufficiently emotionally resonant, actually. I, um, yeah, no. I don't, I don't doubt that, of course, he shares the exact same feeling of horror at looking at Monday's events. Yeah. But as acting like the king in waiting, hmm. it wasn't sympathetic enough. And well, I, I do think as well, it was insufficiently strong compared to the rhetoric we saw last week after the Manchester airport hoax hmm. that, ironically, Richard Tice, given he's blocked you now, came out very strongly and very correctly alongside Lee Anderson saying, no, the police did the right thing here. I guarantee this is this is all ginned up. The same wouldn't be applied to the other side, et cetera. And we're completely vindicated. I feel like he could have been stronger here. Well, that, that, well, that's what I'm trying to say. It's, I mean, you know, judging the tone of it aside, this isn't an inflammatory thing for him to come out and say. No. These are reasonable questions to which we have not yet got the answer. And the answer could be no. This was, you know, a, a totally non-political thing that has happened. Who knows? I, you know, we literally don't know. But lots of people are saying, well, this is your fault, Nigel Farage. This is your fault, Tommy Robinson. It's like, no, I'm not sure it is. Mm. Um, I think, honestly, it's the fault of a bit of fake news that went around, which neither these two people shared, um, but also because of a more deep-seated issue with different co communities in the country that has been left unresolved. Yeah, yeah. 
It is always buzzwords, any ideology. The buzzword is now Tommy Robinson is a buzzword. Yeah. Nigel Farage is a buzzword. And these are thought-terminating cliches, as you yeah. call them in the, in the cult. So just anyone can just... I mean, I, I've been in groups like that. I'm sure you guys have as well, for like friends or people you know who are like... Yeah. All that needs to be said is Nigel Farage or Tommy yeah. Robinson. And then critical thinking just dies in that moment. You don't need to say anything more. So it does, and, and he's aware of that. That's probably why he has that tone. He knows that anything he says is going to be misconstrued, picked up by the media. So he's putting on his sort of best sad face and his best um, states, statemently... Uh, states, well, what's the word? States, statesmanly. statesmanly. Statesmanly face. And there he is. And he's, he's doing his best at that. But no matter what, he could have said anything and it was going to be picked up as... Nigel Farage, Tommy Robinson, the usual yeah. lot. Nobody thinks brains turn off. Yeah. Well, the BBC reporting this morning, as of last night during the riots, they didn't report about the second arrest at all. But this morning they felt it perfectly appropriate to bring on, I can't remember who the other guest was, but consecutively, um, somebody complaining about Farage and then one of the lying communists of hope, not hate, to explain why it's Farage's fault. <sighs> it's insufferable, isn't it? I hope you appreciated that segment from the podcast of The Lotus Eaters. And if you want to see what else we're doing, you can follow our series Lads Hour, where we have a lot of fun. This is where we have a laugh, a bit of a joke, and have fun. A bit of an antidote to our regular depressing news coverage. And if you want to see what else we're doing, you can follow us on Twitter, where we share links to everything we put out so you don't miss a single thing. Thank you very much for watching, and goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>